The Gophers are headed to the Fab Four. Amaya Battle is built for March. And on top of that, ranking every single one of the Gophers football schedule games, you're going to be baffled by who I have at number one. Hey, you are no locked what, on Golden no Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. What up, Gopher fans? You are listening to Lockdown Golden Gophers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. And today we're talking about the Gophers women's basketball team on their way to the Fab Four in the WNIT. They have a shot to win it all, and Amaya Battle is at the forefront because she is made for March. Then we're going to talk about what this schedule looks like for the Gophers football team in 2024 from easiest to hardest games. We're ranking every single one of them. And finally, we'll talk about the transfer portal window, the second window, and what are the priority positions that Minnesota needs. All that today on Lockdown Golden Gophers. So be sure to hit subscribe over on YouTube so you don't miss any of your daily Gophers content. I hope you enjoyed all three of the class breakdowns for 22, 23, and 24 for the top five take fives over the last few days. Now let's dive into what happened in the WNIT because right now Minnesota is going as the final, not only the final team in the Big Ten, there were three of them in the grade eight, but they're the only team to make it to the Fab Four in the Big Ten teams and of the power conference teams still standing in the WNIT. So the Gophers women's basketball team is finding a way to get it done. Now Minnesota is going to take on Troy this Wednesday in hopes to advance to that championship game. Now, it has been a massive, massive, uh, momentous moment for the Gophers women's basketball team having Sophie Hart back in a growing foot capacity or growing to a full capacity here with the Golden Gophers. Now, Mara Brown was also in a limited capacity in those first couple games, but unfortunately, it seems like she may have re-aggravated her foot injury. It doesn't seem like she rebroke it, so that's a good thing, but... I wouldn't be surprised if the Gophers shut her down for the rest of this uh, potential postseason run just to make sure she's good and ready for next year and more goals and priorities that they have there as opposed to playing in these final two games. That being said, if it is something that goes away and it feels 100%, then maybe you could see her, but right now I would not anticipate seeing Mara Braun for the rest of these last one or two games for the Golden Gophers. Now, when you're looking at this WNIT run, the Gophers phrase so far has been find a way. That was a pillar that Coach Don Plitzwhite said was going to be a pillar for the Gophers under her new era of coaching. And that is something that they did in their last matchup against Wyoming. Minnesota finds a way to get the win and head to the Fab Four, beating Wyoming down the stretch, really pulling away from them, but facing a bad losing streak and fighting to find a new offensive identity. The Gophers have found a way. Uh, even beyond that, once Minnesota has hit March, they have responded and they have found a way. On top of that, March is made for tournaments and postseason play, and Amaya Battle is showing that she is absolutely made for March. You look at her Big Ten tournament run in the two games that she played, she scored over 50 points. She only had two true turnovers. The other couple were a little flaky, a couple offensive calls that weren't so set and things like that, but really she's taking good care of the ball. Even in this Wyoming game, took very good care of the ball, only one turnover with her 29 points. I believe she had can't remember off the top of my head, but regardless, she's been finding ways to get it done scoring. She's been finding ways to keep control of the ball, playing with confidence and playing with control. And that is helping this Gophers team take it even further. You're talking about a Gophers team that is finding playoff success without their best player playing. And Amaya Battle is making a case for herself to be considered one of the best, if not the best player on this team as well. 
when she's able to play in her confidence and play in her bag and play controlled. When she does that and she steps up into that jumper that she has been working on all offseason and gaining the confidence and you're seeing it even in a North Dakota State game where she struggled in the first few quarters, had some sloppy turnovers, was not getting it done. She comes down the stretch and hits two of the biggest shots in the entire game to give the Gophers a final lead. Amaya Battle is showing you she is made for postseason play and she could be a special one for the Gophers over the next two seasons that we have her beyond this year. And she could be the reason why the Gophers could win the WNIT in these next couple games. So as we turn our heads towards the Troy opponent, you're going to have a team that is on a hot streak. They've been hot over the back half of the season, but they ha- can they can fall. They can falter, and they haven't had to play the most difficult of schedules. Now, like I said, it's been huge to have Sophie Hart back, but when you're looking at this Troy team, they started out very bad on the season, kicking off with a whopping 1-7 and seven start to the season and then floundering to a 3-8 and eight start. Troy was not going well when it came to kicking off the beginning of the season, but after that, they ran 9 straight wins in a row to make it a... Uh, 12 and 8 as their overall record and then they ultimately finished the season with a 19 and 11 record. So over the back half of the season, they went 16 and 3 down the stretch and that is one heck of a way to close a year and get back on track. Now that being said, they did lose to every comp power conference opponent that they had on their schedule tennessee georgia iowa state even memphis which isn't quite a power conference but can be seen as one of those programs that has the respect in the college basketball space all four of those were losses on this troy schedule now when you're looking at the players themselves there's one name that pops off the page when it comes to troy and that is jamaya Hollings. she is far and away their best player and leading the team in both points and rebounds with 15.5 15.5 points per game and 9.2 rebounds per game, nearly averaging a double-double. So the Gophers are going to have their hands full there, but it's not just that. The Troy rotation, when it comes to minutes played, it has about nine players deep. So they're going to be a team that likes to run and gun and gas you and really wear your team out because they know they have the depth to push you. And when you're looking at that Not only do they have that depth of nine players or so, but they also have four players that are scoring 12 or more points averaged per game. So that means that they have versatility in their scoring and many different players can put the ball in the hoop. So Minnesota is going to have its hands full when it comes to defensively against this Troy team and trying to cut out or limit that versatility in scoring. Now, that being said, Troy is terrible i mean horrendous from shooting the three-point ball 28 percent from deep so that is a way that minnesota can really try to squeeze things off is by closing the lane playing more protected inside defense and forcing troy into tough three-point shots or three-point shots that they do not want certain players taking that is going to be a maybe key factor in this game for minnesota to try and move to the fab four Now, on top of that, Sophie Hart should be a big player for the Gophers in this game because Troy does not really have a player that can play on the interior who can hang with Sophie Hart physically. The tallest player on Troy is six foot two. Maybe they can physically hang, but I just don't think that anybody is going to be able to handle her one on one, which means they're going to have to have guards or forwards drawing inside to try and double down on Sophie Hart to try and limit her hook or her post hooks or her inside game. And when that Double team comes, it should free up three point opportunities for Grace Groholski and Mal Higher, and it should allow Maya Battle to have some versatility when it comes to the dribble drive and kick, or maybe potentially playing an inside game with Sophie Hart and being able to open up opportunities for their teammates. So I think overall, Sophie Hart is going to be the key for the Gophers in this Troy basketball game. And if she can get it going and generate points inside, then that's going to draw the defenders in, in inwards. And then from there, we should have open looks for a Maya Battle, Mal Hire, uh, uh, Grace Groholski, Maggie Zanano, you name it, we should find opportunities for them to get easy looks and hopefully they can capitalize and pull away. Now, if Minnesota's shot is struggling, then they will have to stand strong defensively in order to pull this one out. Troy is not a team that they're going to just walk over, but I do think they could win big if their shot starts to fall and Sophie Hart plays tough. 
So that's going to do it for us on that women's basketball side of things. This Gophers team could really win the whole dang thing when it comes to the WNIT, even without Mara Braun, and hopefully we keep that streak going. But next, I want to talk about the ranking Minnesota's football schedule in 2024 from the most difficult to the least difficult games in 2024. We're diving into that coming up next. First, let's talk to you about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs, because when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for your role. That's why LinkedIn is the place to be when it comes to finding your next new hire. LinkedIn Jobs has all the tools to help you find the right professional for your team faster and for free. And it's not just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of over a billion with a B. That's right. Over 1 billion professionals, which means makes it the best place to find a great hire. It also gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. And LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. So it sounds like a win-win, right? Well, it is because hiring is so easy that you, when you have that many quality candidates and it has 86% of small businesses getting a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So you know when it comes to small businesses and making hiring decisions, you wear so many different hats and have to do so many different things that sometimes making a job post and making it so it actually reflects what you're looking for, you don't have the time to nitpick and review and rewrite and all of that. Well, LinkedIn Jobs also has ways to make the process easier, and they've even launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making it so much quicker. So 2.5 million small businesses have been using LinkedIn for hiring, and now is the time for you to go and try it out for free over at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. All right, Gophers fans, we are jumping into the rankings for the Gophers 2024 football season. I know what you have heard time and time again that this schedule is difficult. I've said here on the podcast multiple times that I think this schedule is very comparable to what the Gophers played last season, in which case the Gophers, if they can put things together, should find a way to potentially be successful. They should have closed last year out at least with seven wins, fumbling the bag on two of them, Illinois and Northwestern, namely in the final closing seconds of the games. Now, if they can put those away, you have a seven win season, even in the different struggles and different capacities and with the injuries that you suffered. If Minnesota can put it together and have better quarterback play and the defense can step up a little bit better, they can find success in this season. So I wanted to go ahead and rank the teams from easiest or least difficult to most difficult. And we're going to kick it off with number one being Rhode Island. Now, I will not have an FCS team ranked ahead of any FBS team, plain and simple, unless we're talking about a perennial contending type team like a South Dakota State or North Dakota State. But even then, it would be rare for me. So that was an easy choice to have Rhode Island as the easiest game. It needs to be a blowout win for Minnesota and a chemistry building game, a fine tuning game for Minnesota to really lay it on and get right early in the season. Now, the number two least difficult game is Nevada. Now, ever since the coaching staff that they had there when Carson Strong was the quarterback, they left, they went to Colorado State, and all of a sudden this program has taken a nosedive over the past two years, going 2-10 and ten in back-to-back -back seasons, so much so that that coach got fired. They brought in a new coaching staff with head coach Jeff Choate, who was the co-defensive coordinator of the Texas Longhorns from 2001 to 2003, or 2000. 21 to 2023, excuse me. So they will be looking to shake things up and make some noise. And Minnesota will be one of their first opportunities to take a swing at a big team. So that being said, they, they could present challenges here and there, but I expect Minnesota to take care of business. You move on to the number three least difficult. And I'm saying it's UCLA. Now, some people might be shocked by that, but you're talking about major, major departures on all, both sides of the ball on major positions, many, many starters leaving, many NFL guys leaving, many guys transferring. UCLA was up in chaos. Then on top of that, you have a starting quarterback who, in my opinion, just is nothing to write home about. Then you have a head coach that left to become an old offensive coordinator for Ohio State. And then you're adjusting to a new conference that has a higher standard of defense and your new head coach, I believe, has zero head coaching experience and zero play calling experience. 
that sounds like the worst crapshoot, the worst mystery box that you would want to have going in a brand new expanded conference. So I'm telling you, UCLA is going to be in for a rough bottom of the conference type year. Hear my words right now today on April 3rd, April 2nd, whenever you are listening to this. UCLA, one of the easiest teams on the schedule, in my opinion, but one of the least difficult, I should say. Now, number four for me is Illinois. I don't have much faith in Illinois as a being a good program overall on the season. That being said, they weren't great last year, and they still found a way to beat Minnesota. Minnesota fumbled the bag in the final two minutes against a backup quarterback. So I'm giving them very little credit, but I am giving them some credit. I do think they'll be better than UCLA. And so Illinois comes in at four. Number five, approaching the midway point, is Rutgers. I believe they're fifth on the least difficult. Rutgers had one of their best seasons last year, giving cre credit where it's due. I'm not going to take anything away from that. But it was mainly due to an insane ground game and defense. So the running back is back, and that should be promising. I do believe they've lost a couple offensive linemen starters, and I don't know what the, is happening with that defense, but I think that last year is more of an anomaly than it is the new norm for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. So that being said, you add, take that, you add in the fact that Minnesota has destroyed Rutgers two years ago, and I think that they'll know how to counter Kirk Shiraka's offense, not only being on the side of they've had him as a coach, but Coach Heatherman being a coordinator or a assistant coach over with Rutgers, knowing how to attack it and seeing the offense on the daily should only play more towards the Gophers' uh, benefit, in my opinion. So I think Rutgers is closer to the middle, but I don't think it's too terrible of a game either way. You move to six, which is right smack dab in the middle. I'm going to put North Carolina. Now, North Carolina losing Drake May could be immensely impactful, and it could be detrimental for the Tar Heels. I don't think it's going to be detrimental because they have Connor Harrell, who has been waiting in the wings. He played in a bowl game with them. He's been within the program, so he could be a stopgap if needed. But then they also brought in a transfer quarterback, Max Johnson, who has played a lot of SEC games with LSU and Texas A&M. Now, all of that being said, neither one of those two players have even half of what Drake May brings as a threat. So, yes, I know Nate McCollum's there, but I don't think they really have that many talented wide receivers in that pass catchers room as well. And so you take away the pass catchers, you take a dip at quarterback, and then you talk about uh, – the QB drop off, and then on top of that, it's going to have a lot of it riding on the back of Omari and Hampton, the all all nation type running back last year. I just think it's going to be tough, especially with it being game one, especially being here in Minnesota. I think North Carolina could have a tough swing at it, and that's why I put them smack dab in the middle. Moving on to seventh, seventh hardest, I guess, or seventh least difficult. We're going to Maryland, another team that has lost some impactful defensive backs, some offensive linemen starters, their leading receiver and a quarterback that has led their program and the Big Ten Conference in passing yards. And he has been a staple for them for three years. Now, I think their new transfer coming in, MJ Morris, keeps them as a threat but it is more of a winnable game for Minnesota than they'll probably be given credit for. I think Maryland could have some ups and downs, just like they did last season when they dropped it to, I believe, Illinois Northwestern. I think that Minnesota is a team that could sneak up on Maryland. So I'll put them right in the same category. I don't care if you flip them in North Carolina, make North Carolina harder or what have you, but I think they're kind of right there in that same tier. Now, moving into the top five most difficult schools. The fifth most difficult, in my opinion, is going to be USC. Now, you know Lincoln Riley will have a high-powered offense, but I see, until I see it, uh, the defense is a massive, massive issue. So until I see a huge improvement from them on the other side, I don't care. I'm not going to put them above in Iowa. I'm not going to put them above Wisconsin until I see an offensive line that isn't a sieve and a defense that can actually stop a nosebleed. Then it, I am going to keep Iowa and Wisconsin in front of them. USC is not in the same tier as Michigan or Ohio State. Heck, I don't even think they're in the same tier as Penn State. So they're hence the fifth most difficult on the schedule. Then you move into the top four. I've got the fourth most difficult as Wisconsin. I think there's a lot of things up in the air. Again, playing your rivals always, you're going to get the best of them either way, whether it's a good or bad year for them. And I think 
Losing Braylon Allen is going to have a huge impact. But Ches Malusi is back, and he's proved he can be a capable running back. You've got a couple good running back recruits coming in. I believe they had a transfer from Oklahoma who came in, and they're, they were – Touted to be an air raid team with Phil Longo coming in last year. We didn't really see that, but will it come to fruition with Tyler Van Dyke as their quarterback? I'm not a huge fan of him, but he's shown flashes in his career, so maybe he can put it together. Uh, Pauling has shown he can be a solid receiver, but do they have other pass catchers that can keep on going? I think there's just a lot of question marks with Wisconsin. I think they're going to be a fairly good team, and I think year two could be better than year one for uh Coach Fickle. So overall, Wisconsin comes in at the fourth hardest. The third hardest for me, Iowa. I think Iowa has shown they're going to be a staple in a stalwart when it comes to special teams and defense. They show it time and time again. Biggest question is offense, and the biggest question is quarterback. Now, is Cade McNamara going to be all right coming back from another big injury? Is he going to be a top tier guy, or is he going to be more of an issue? He'll probably be better than Deacon Hill either way, but how? difficult will this Iowa team be now they only lost one game or two games last year I believe and guess who it was Minnesota now I know people are gonna bash that people are gonna debate that if you're wearing the black and yellow black and gold whatever you want to call it but overall a win's a win they got it done and I think Minnesota could cash in on another one here at home next season if they can put it all together especially with it being earlier in the season but Iowa is a difficult team now, the top two difficult teams. I think you would guess Michigan, the back, the national champions. Running it back would be my most difficult, but I've got them as the second most difficult because we don't know what's happening with them at quarterback. Now, they could get active in the second portal uh, wave, or they could stick to it and keep Alex Orgy, and maybe he's the second version of some running quarterback that is all world and can get it done, Lamar Jackson or something of the sort. I don't see it, but... Overall, he is a very athletic quarterback. Now, they've got multiple running backs. They're going to keep running the ground and pound the ball. Donovan Edwards, Benjamin Hall, Cole Cabana, Jordan Marshall, all those guys. I believe Mullins is still with the team. They have like five very ready running backs ready to dominate. If their offensive line can hold it together with Sharon Moore being their kind of positional coach, but now being the head coach there, I think he's going to have the offensive line juicing and ready to go. I think he's going to have the running backs rearing to go. And so it comes down to can the quarterback and the receivers at least be uh, stable? Can they be uh, average? If they can be average, Michigan's still going to be a dangerous team. But if they can't, it could be very difficult for their offense moving forward. Their defense looks to return a few starters. They should be pretty good. And then the most difficult team on my schedule for the Minnesota Golden Gophers is Penn State. I think both their running backs are nuts. One of the best tandems in the entire country. Their quarterback has all the talent in the world, and now they add an offensive coordinator who knows how to pick apart a defense. Coming from Kansas, he knows what he's doing, and you have a super talented quarterback, some decent receivers. They brought in a kid from Ohio State. They've got, uh, uh, I can't even think of his name right now, Keandre Lambert Smith coming back, and then you've got the two really good running backs, and their defense still has Abdul Carter and a bunch of dogs on it. So Penn State, I don't, I don't know if Minnesota has a chance in that game. I think Penn State is going to shock a lot of people this year, and they're my most difficult team on the schedule. Now, to close up today's show, we're going to talk about the positions of need in that second portal window for the Gophers. We're diving into those thoughts to wrap it up coming up next. First, I want to tell you about our quick friends over at eBay Motors because passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning formula for championships, and it's also what helps keep your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance, superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. That's where you got to go is eBay Motors. Now, I just got myself my dream car. I got myself the Dodge Ram. We got the limited Laramie Longhorn, so you know what it is. But overall, if I ever need a part, if I ever need to spice it up and give it, spoil my car a little bit, you know I'm going over to eBay Motors because they have over 122 million parts, and it will always be guaranteed to fit your ride or die your vehicle it's guaranteed to fit every time or your money back so with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash and they can help you out whether you're into speed power or style so definitely give ebay motors a try keep your ride or die alive over at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply and the ebay motors guaranteed fit is for u.s customers only 
All right, Gophers, we're cr- closing this one up with a very quick talk about that second transfer portal window. It's going to be a little bit briefer because I know that we'll probably talk about it time and time again as we get closer, as we've seen more names hit the portal. But what are the positions that the Gophers and Gopher fans should have an eye on for this portal? Well, the first one is obviously quarterback now. Max Brosmer, very promising. Drake Lindsay has shown some promise as well early in these stages of spring. But the Gophers need more bodies in that quarterback room. You don't have enough having two scholarship quarterbacks in there. So don't be surprised to see the Gophers at least take one more quarterback. Maybe two, but I think that it might be too dried up to be able to take two. But the Gophers will absolutely take one more quarterback in the transfer portal in case of injury, needing some veteran experience, and what have you. Another position that I think is priority numero uno for the Gophers is the interior defensive lineman position. I think Devin Eastern is going to be a dog, but we need some players in there with him to help create that interior pass rush because that is the difference in helping our guys on the outside like Jod Joyner, like Anthony Smith, like Danny Strigow. You got to be able to hit that pressure from the inside, push the quarterback outward, and then have your guys finish home coming from the edge. So I think it's huge to have interior pass rush. And I think Kyler Baugh really delivered and probably over-delivered for the Gophers, in that, especially last year, but over the past two years. And we've seen the growth of Devin Eastern, especially last year. I think he can take another step and really be a dominant force on in the inside. But who's going to play there with him? Now, it could be Jalen Logan Redding, who has played some inside and outside. It looks like he was practicing a lot inside. But you need depth. You need more behind just those two players. Now, you've got Darnell Jeffries, but he's coming off a season-long injury. You've got two young guys in there, Martin Ousu, Thierry, and Randall. But are they ready to play Big Ten speed? football i don't know so that's why i think you need to add one or two interior defensive linemen to this rotation to be able to help that interior pass rush and help your defense as a whole and then the final position i think you could consider in the transfer portal and it depends on how the spring wraps up is the cornerback position. Now, I feel like Minnesota has some very healthy talent in this room, but you need four or five real solid, dependable cornerbacks to compete at the best level in this conference. And right now, I think it depends on what you see from Zaquan Bryan, Rylan Kelly, Tariq Watson, Mike Gerald in this spring session. Because if only one of those guys steps up and balls out, then you only have three guys that you really can depend on. But if two or three of them step up and they really show that they can hold their own night in, night out every Saturday then you don't really need to go to the portal for that position. So if Minnesota doesn't believe they have at least four, but probably five outside guys, I'm not talking about the nickel guys because we know we have a lot of depth in the nickel position with Jack Henderson, with Craig McDonald, and the Gophers like to rotate a lot of different safeties into that position as well. So they have a lot of depth in the safety room, a lot of talent in the safety room that might not be able to play a lot this season. So they know that they have depth in that nickel room. But on the outside, you need four or five solid guys. And if the Gophers don't, think that they have four or five that they can depend on, then they could add another veteran to this room. Now, outside of those three positions, I believe Minnesota has the depth in every other room. It just becomes who can rise to the top, who can take over those starting jobs, and how big is the drop-off between your starters and your depth. If it's not that big of a drop off, then what you can do is really just swing for the fences on the best talent available that can help contribute to your team. But you also have to be in mind of Will they be able to start if it's that tier of a player? If if it's at the spot that Cody Lindenberg's playing, probably not. If it's at the spot that Justin Wally and Ethan Robinson are playing, probably not. If it's at the spot that um, Devin Eastern is playing, probably not. But if you can get some guys that can compete and fight and scrap for those kind of open positions that are still in flux, that is what you attack in the portal, even outside of those three positions we've named. Now, overall, I think their strongest positions right now for the Gophers is safety because they have a ton of guys, a ton of names in that room. Coleman Bryson, Kerry Brown, Darius Green, Aiden Gooseby, Coy Parrish. That's five guys right there. Giante McMillan, that's six. I've just named six off the top for you. Garrison Moreau is another player who's been working into the rotation there. That's seven safeties I've named right off the dome. So I think overall, you know that safety position is deep. I think the tight end position has a lot of talented bodies in that room as well, but who can rise? to the occasion. You've got Jameson Gears. You've got Nick Keller. You've got guys like Nathan Jones who are starting to step up. Pierce Walsh. You've got two 
incoming true freshmen, Jacob Simpson and Julian Johnson, who are both with the team early enrollees right now. So that's six or seven guys right there that you can really start to look into and see who can separate. And then finally, the running backs room super deep as well. So I wouldn't expect any safeties, tight ends, or running backs to be added in this transfer window. I think the running back room is super deep, super spread out when it comes to uh, ages and experience as well. And so those are the three I wouldn't expect anything. Wide receivers, offensive linemen, you've got depth there. But if you have some top tier talent that can really contribute or help take your group to the next level, then maybe that you take a look there. Same with the linebackers. But I think the three positions that you'll definitely see the Gophers take a look at and a swing or a sniff at is quarterback, interior defensive lineman, and then possibly outside cornerback, depending on who shows up in the spring camps. That's going to do it for us on today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you hit subscribe. I hope you tell others about the show. Be sure to hit like over on YouTube so that way others can see it, find it, and watch this episode as well. But I'm going to tomorrow talk about who are my five key gophers to make or break the 2024 season. I would love your thoughts down below in the comments on who you would say should be there. We'll see if we agree on tomorrow's show. Until then, row the boat, Sky Umago Gophers. As always, don't forget to subscribe.